This might be any oil research laboratory. One of the first things you'll notice is the glass apparatus of all kinds. Have you ever given a thought as to where it comes from? This, for instance, how's that made? Behind it lie the skill and experience of a highly specialized branch of the glass blowing industry, employing craftsmen like 32 year old George Ola. His equipment is simple hollow glass cylinders of all sizes, a flame, his fingers, the breath of his lungs, and the knowledge acquired during the 16 years he spent in the craft. Heating the glass to about 800 degrees centigrade, he draws off the length of tubing required for making the bulb. You might think this would be too hot to hold. Well, the answer is that glass is a poor conductor of heat. This is where a blow comes in and the hot glass is kept turning to give an even thickness. A check for size with the calipers. A pear-shaped bulbs forming the column. Six of these bulbs are wanted. The next job is to fix the column onto the bulb. This is how the opening's made. prevent the joint from collapsing. Another opening is wanted for the side tube. So thanks to the glass blower, another piece of apparatus is ready for the laboratory. In many parts of Southeast Asia, an ingenious means of making fire has been in use for 150 years. It's the Kampong fire piston and it works on the principle of compression ignition. A piston fits tightly into a cylinder. A small hollow at the end of the piston is filled with an inflammable material called raybok, a sort of palm pulp readily available in this part of the world. When the piston is rammed home with a sharp blow, the air in the cylinder is compressed. This air compression generates considerable heat, enough to set light to the Raybok.
no one knows how the fire piston originated at a time when the principle of compression ignition was barely known in the Western world. Nor how, with their crude tools, craftsmen made these decorative and accurate instruments in ivory, bone, hardwood or metal. The application of the simple principle that air generates heat when it's compressed has led to the modern diesel engine. Compression ignition, indispensable to modern civilization, equally vital in the jungle settlements of Southeast Asia. From this piece of wood will come the legs or rails for a Windsor chair. The men who turn these legs are called bodgers and used to work in the beech woods of southern England. The Dean brothers, this is Alec, are the last of these craftsmen using the same primitive equipment. This is Owen, the elder brother. The turning is done on this pole lathe, the oldest type of lathe and the simplest. The wood spins when the treadle is pressed and is pulled back by a springy larch pole, so that only every other stroke is used for cutting. <laughs> 